It's great that we list them on the Swiss Borg app, one of the best apps in the world to buy and sell your crypto. You know where to get it. We're here again this week for the crypto game. Pietro and Shane, are you ready for this week? <laughs> is he still calling it a game? <laughs> when do these Danish guys actually realize this is serious, man? Stop messing it's about, man. This is no game. You're talking <laughs> for adventures now. What do you reckon, Pietro? What are we going to do? How are we going to get this guy to learn? Yeah, this this is the ha half game, half serious, I would say. It's a, it's an informative game, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I feel you, Shane. I feel you. Oh my God, these guys have such a chance of humor, don't they? The Swedes, yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought, was, I thought you were from Denmark. You know, from Denmark. No, 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 Swedes. I thought he was from Finland. Pietro, did you tell me Finland? No, 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 no. no. I, I knew he was from Sweden. Yeah. All right, let's go, Stockholm boy. Let's kick this off. Come on, man. Stop messing about. The game, game is on. Game on. Let's do this. Okay. So for the first one, we have pancake swap. In three, two, one. Oh. Boom. Hey, everybody. Yeah. So for me, for me, this is long term bull and long term because of the current market conditions that, you know, it, it's unclear what will happen in general. But it was actually one of my first entries into the DeFi world. So I, I when I first started, uh, you know, understanding what yield farming is and liquidity pools, etc. Uh, PancakeSwap was one of the first ones. And I like it a lot because it launches, uh, it constantly launches very small cap LPs. So there's a lot of interesting opportunities with higher APRs, of course, so higher returns, but more risk. Uh, but the newer tokens on the Binance Smart Chain generally get a liquidity pool on PancakeSwap. And I, I think it's it's one of the biggest players still on the Binance Smart Chain. I think it's there to stay. I'm, uh, I'm bullish long term. Yeah, I think when you look at sushi swap and pancake swap, and in particularly having the ability to trade any token on the BNB smart chain, uh, just connecting your wallet, it really is pure DeFi, no registration, no hassle needed. Um, I think when you start to look at actually how they've developed it with buy, win, farm, spend, and stake, heck, you can even vote with it. Um, I guess you can have your cake and eat it too, bullish on mm. pancake swap. Awesome. Okay. I'm bullish because the protocol revenue is up 39.8% in the last 30 days, and it seems to be priced in. There also seems to be a perfect accumulation phase because it sort of hit the bottom in July, uh, and now it's been steadily increasing. So anything below five euro is something that I'm interested in. I've also checked out the PE, and the PE is currently at 36.8, with 6 million being generated just from the protocol in revenue in the last 30 days, which is when we compare it to the other ones on this list, it stands out. Uh, total value looked at 3 billion. One of my favorites holds thumbs, holds a bit of a bag of it. Uh, very bullish on it. Anything below five, I think it's a good deal. I love the way he quotes it in Euros. He's a pure Swede, isn't he? I thought Corona were going to come out there. All right, let's go. I, let's I go. love the amount, of, uh, the amount of numbers you threw out there. Oh, I man. This guy's got. This guy's more more num more numbers than an abacus. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Okay. So for our second one, we have the Google influence, possibly Bohemian. The graph. What do we think? In three, two, one. Oh, interesting. Very very interesting. A different direction. Pietro, take the lead. So for, for me, this one is unclear. And again, I, I like to be a little bit comparative when I when I do these things. So in terms of purpose, like the graph is incredible, right? It's making open data accessible to applications. Uh, it's pretty much the Google of, of blockchain technology, uh, right? But in I would rather hold other tokens and just because of the upside potential on a lot of the others. Um, we've done this game now a few weeks, and if I look at the ones I was more positive on, more bullish, uh, I definitely prefer them over the graph. So uh, unclear how much this this moves upwards when the next bull run comes. So I, I, I like the project in general; it's incredible. But the token itself, unclear if I would hold that rather than others. 
Yeah, sometimes we can have a dislocation. It happens with stocks all the time. You can have yeah. the company and then you can have the share price. They're not interlinked. I know that's strange that it sounds, but a stock is not the company in that regard. Uh, there can be dislocation. And in crypto, that's very much the case with a lot of tokens. There can be some really great uh, things happening on the company level, but not actually accumulating value on the token level. I think when you look at the graph, you know, APIs for a vibrant decentralized future, you know, any types of index protocol are really interesting to me because I look at it a big macro picture. Um, with regards to the token, I would probably agree with you there, Pietro. I don't know if it is going to go up, down, or sideways over that period of time. Um, but I think when you have something querying the Ethereum network and IPFS is, uh, and anybody can open on it in a true open source fashion. You know, I really like that technology. Um, when you look at some of the investors actually in the graph, anybody from Kyle over at Multicoin and the boys at Coin Fund, Parfin Capital, um, DTC Capital, I think also were on the book. Um, this probably was shown to me a couple of years ago, but uh, unfortunately my name is not on that list of investors. So uh, yeah, that's the one that got away. But I think the guys do a great job and it's definitely one to keep an eye on and, and watch. I am bullish on that as an investment. So I will say this, I'm bullish on the macro, I'm bearish on the on the short term. And here's why the protocol revenue is up 145% over the last 30 days, but total revenue is down 21% in the same period. And the PE is at in a staggering 13,822. So there seems to be a big disconnect, just like you highlighted, Shane, between the token and Pietro as well, between the token and the business. Mm -hmm. uh, with that said, they've only been rem generating revenue since early January 21. So they are early. Uh, they have they need to get that rev share model uh, under wraps and they need to start improving those numbers. So for that reason, short term bearish, but long term, love the vision that they have. And they do feel a real need in the space, but can't go in and buy it now, in my opinion. Ooh, got to got to got to buy the vision, mm -hmm. man. Don't worry about the revenue. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Amazon were exactly the same back in the day. <laughs> I'm sure that Amazon had a better revenue than total revenue for August was thirty-four thousand dollars. Compare yeah, that to okay. like six million, man. Listen, that's light. I remember the Facebook IPO, and um, everybody was saying the exact same thing. You know, in order to be on Facebook, I don't pay you any money. How are you going to generate revenue? Um, and uh, this was pre-mobile. So uh, anyway, I think that worked out quite well. So you got to you got to believe. You do speak words of wisdom, Shane. Okay, so then for our third one, we have the classic, actually from uh, our Finnish neighbor here in Sweden. <laughs> in three, two, one. Oh, and all three upper. Pietro, take the lead. Absolutely. Uh, short and quick and easy here. It's one of the most established DeFi protocols. It's uh, it's by far the biggest borrowing lending platform and. And really, what, 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 one of the big fish when it comes to DeFi, right? Uh, in bear market situations, and this is something that we also discuss in the bear market report in, on that we recently released on Swiss Bork. Uh, these kind of reliable products, right? Reliable assets are the ones you flock to. You want to flock to more like safer assets, and then very reliable, very established, and especially with a clear use case like in the DeFi space, right? So. Borrowing, lending in the DeFi space and in crypto is not going anywhere. And AB is the big fish in that. So uh, whenever this next bull run will happen or upward uh, trend, AB is, is one of the ones I think that will do the best. And definitely one of the ones that I would, I would like to hold in a, in a bear market throughout it. Yeah, I think for me, when we start talking about the ghost, because that's what Ave is for the people that don't know, I believe it's Finnish for ghost. Correct me if I'm wrong, my European counterparty. Um, it was originally Eat Lend. And um, I remember back in 2017 going to a crypto event here in London and meeting uh, Martin and, and Stanny. And I think at that stage, uh, they had something like one or two million dollars on their platform. Uh, and I remember asking myself the question going, God, why would anyone borrow or lend? Um, that just shows you what I knew back then. And actually, the market knew back then. Uh, it's wonderful to see these guys execute. And they've done that. For anybody that doesn't know, Ave, of course, is a decentralized financial protocol, which allows people to lend and borrow, plain and simple. Of course, now they've built many different products and features, but at the core, that's what it really, really is. And things don't have to be complex, but they did it so, so well. It's the behemoth in the room. And you know, it's funny that every podcast and uh, interview uh, that I 
listen to and read, um, especially coming out of the US, um, especially with all the uh, large macro hedge fund guys um, and big entrepreneurs, everybody always mentions one thing. And especially over the last kind of three to six months, everybody always mentions Ave. And actually, when you look at centralized finance and actually real traditional uh, centralized finance, and what happened with regards to decentralized finance. It was the decentralized finance protocols that when we started to see the market fall apart on the back of everything that was happening at Luna and Terra and Anchor and Celsius, actually uh, decentralized platforms like Aave performed perfectly well. They did exactly what they should have done. So really interested in, in, in Aave. I was looking at it under 50 bucks, just eyeing it. It, of course, was listed on the Swiss board platform. Um, that was not investment advice for any of our team to buy it under 50 bucks. And nor did I. I think it's currently trading around 87 bucks right now. When you look at a high of around 450, um, I think this has got legs. Um, I think it's the best of the best. And I wish those guys all the best. And it's great that we list them on the Swiss board app, one of the best apps in the world to buy and sell your crypto you know where to get it a hundred percent so i think it's really interesting what you both are highlighting uh pietro a little bit to what you were touching upon it seems nearly looking at the statistics that Aave might be an early indicator of when a bottom has been hit they were actually trailing upwards even since the beginning or end of june so they're nearly a month ahead of the other ones in this list in terms of reversing the trend and sort of hitting a bottom going up total value at 4.9 billion shane so you should have gotten in when they had a million yeah. or a couple of million <laughs> Uh, protocol <laughs> revenue up 1.38 or up to 1.38 million dollars 35 percent up in the last uh, 30 days with a pe at 79 so not as healthy as pancake but a lot healthier than graph but here's also where i think the big ticker is because i do not think that lens protocol Alves new social protocol is mm -hmm. priced in so anything below 90 euros this is not financial advice this is just my own personal opinion this is a game for all intent and purposes is what i think is interesting uh, because i do not think that the lens protocol which i see to be a behemoth in the social uh crypto space in years to come i do not think that that is currently priced in looking at these numbers so for that reason it's a uh, bull bull long term and bull short term that's my opinion on Ave. Sorry, I forgot my notes there a bit. <laughs> For the final one, we have something that connects us all or that wants to connect us all. We have Chainlink in three, two, one. Interesting. On the same side as Shane for once. <laughs> Don't worry. It feels uh, it feels unfamiliar, but I feel familiar in unfamiliar circumstances. So I'm okay with that. <laughs> Usually nobody's on my side, which is great, man. Then I know I'm right. <laughs> You're ahead of the trend. I mean, so everyone knows the decentralized Oracle network. It's it's obviously one of the most established projects in crypto. I'm long-term bullish on this. Uh, I think I'm also consistent with what smart money are holding right now. So if you look at smart money data, so the people that have consistently made money in the market and have consistently been, let's say, quote unquote, the smartest investors, uh, these people, other than holding Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, and some stable coins, they always go for the most established protocols. And one of their key holdings is Chainlink, even at the moment in a bear market. Uh, so I'm consistent with that. I don't think it's going to gain as much um, uh, in price movement as some of the other ones, but I think it's a, it's a very solid one to hold. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, listen, the guys at Chainlink have been coming to um, some of our events since 2018 in London. Um, extremely smart uh, bunch of individuals. And I think really when you look at what they actually do with regards to integration of off-chain data into smart contracts, uh, it's really feeding that to that utility side of space. Um, I think really when you look at their ability to uh, mine major data, data fields um, and offer that up as a service um, and have the ability for people to become node operators and earn revenue by running data infrastructure, um, very techy, but absolutely love what they do. It's trading around seven bucks. I'm surprised. It seems very range bound. Actually, you know, it's come off uh, down to that level since about May, and it's been trading within that. So we haven't really seen any major bounce on it. But I think as an interest, you know, infrastructural move, 
Um, I love what they do, and um, as I said, yeah, such a critical and key component of the uh, of the overall ecosystem going forth, and really, really smart guys. So yeah, I, I I think you'll start to see real smart money, as they already have within within their investor base, um, own that and, and hold that. Wish them all the best. Yeah, can only agree. It's uh, one of the glues that combines the crypto world. They have to this day over a hundred of the biggest DApps and growing in their ecosystem. This is of course going to be sort of a network effect for them. The more big dApps they have in their network, the more valuable they become, the more key of the cornerstone and fundamental they are. Uh, super interesting, something that I very much look at DCAing in over a long period of time, especially yeah, at these yeah. levels, because now it doesn't have the sexy appeal. And uh, I think it was Patrick, uh, one of the Wall Street old style investors that went, invest in the stuff that isn't sexy, but that really fills a purpose, uh, because that's usually overlooked. Uh, that was all the ones we had for this week, but I do want to ask you guys one final question, and it is uh, sort of regards to, do we think that the macro perspective with the uh, world's longest and harshest drought currently in China will have any major effects on the crypto space? We're currently seeing factories locking down, people fainting in the streets. It's the warmest, biggest, and most intense drought in recorded human history. Uh, we're just starting to get news of it here in the West, but it's been going on for a couple of weeks in China. What do you think is something that's going to impact the crypto on the short term, or is it, is it a big macro move that's just starting to, uh, starting to feel even here? What do you guys think on it? Uh, any major events like this in the world um, are market moving events. Um, they are, are, are all um, influenced uh, and affected uh, markets. That's what markets do. They're forward indicators. Um, if we believe that slowdown will occur in the largest economy for output, uh, of course, it will start hitting those stocks that are affected to it. Um, I don't know the depths of that yet. I think uh, it's day by day. But um, because we've seen a high correlation to to traditional equity markets with regards to crypto markets, yeah, I think it will have a little bit of effect on it. And, and certainly on a day-to-day -day basis, I monitor very carefully major equity moves, and we're still seeing that in the crypto space. Um, before I pass it on to Pietro, actually, if anybody uh, would like to know more about the markets or the bear markets, Pietro and the team have, have completed an unbelievable in-depth bear market report. I believe it's on the Swiss Borg website um under blogs but i'm sure pietro myself and everybody else follow us on linkedin put it in uh the notes below but go check it out well done pietro i'll pass it over to you for your knowledge yeah thank you for that uh yeah so definitely have uh yeah check it out because i think it's a very helpful uh report for whatever level of expertise you're in at whatever uh point of your investment journey you're in whatever age wherever you're from it it, it can really be beneficial in terms of the question on the drought, so everything's everything's intertwined, right? When we look at such a big macro perspective, everything's intertwined. Uh, this leads me back to something that my little sister, so she's actually 13, and she asked me, um, uh, well, the price of gas were going up, right? And it was constantly on the news. We were on holiday. This was constantly on the news. She's like, yeah, but why do so many people care? Like, if you don't have a car, why would you care about prices of gas? And that, that, that's the, my, yeah, it's like a trickle down, right? Price of gas affects transport, which affects the, how much it costs to bring a product from one point to another. So all of it trickles down. China being one of the biggest economies in the world and uh, obviously being so important to the, to the global health, right? Again, interconnected to the US economy a lot, right? With, with how, how much these two economies are connected, even though it doesn't seem like on a political level, but the economies are very interconnected. So when something like this happens and, and massive droughts and again, record high temperatures also all over Europe this year, uh, rivers drying out in Europe, that's never happened really. Uh, so this is obviously very concerning. And, uh, you know, crypto is still quite a young asset class, it, relatively speaking. Uh, some people are still tentative on it, so it could affect it, obviously. Uh, we don't know how much, but it's logical that it would affect it. Guys, thank you so much for your valuable input, your experience, and sharing that with us in the community. I very much appreciate it, and I know that other people do that as well. Thank you so much for this week. Is that the game over? Man, I already just started the game. <laughs>